Do you want to find out how long will your insomnia last? Whether or not you're struggling with sleep problems or insomnia on a short-term basis or it's been going on for a while, in this video we will really look at the difference between the two and what are the things that you can do, practical things, to treat and overcome your insomnia in 2019. Hi there, my name is Beatrix Schmidt from the sleepdeepmethod.com. As a sleep coach and speaker, I help professionals just like you to overcome insomnia and other sleep-related problems. So for the best and most practical sleep and insomnia-related advice, hit the subscribe button below and come back each week for brand new videos on these topics. I can understand what we feel when we're not able to get to sleep. This is why I spent the last 10 years researching sleep. First of all, to help myself overcome my own insomnia and now being able to help clients to do the same and treat their insomnia naturally. Short-term insomnia is probably something that most of us have experienced for a period of time in, my, in our life. These aren't the times when you have had something significant, like a significant life event. It could be not just negative things, but it could be something that in really exciting time in your life or perhaps traveling that could have caused a shorter term uh, insomnia or your inability to be able to sleep well at night consistently. And this is normally about a two week period. Uh, but when it actually becomes longer than that, that's when we start looking at whether or not this, uh, this actually becomes a longer term, what I would call a more chronic insomnia um, over a period of time. So short term insomnia is often linked to sleep deprivation, maybe a couple of nights of not so good sleep um, that might persist for a couple of weeks. And if that's the one that you are currently perhaps struggling with, just know that most of us have experienced that and it should actually go away by itself once the underlying problems uh, fade away or your life gets back to a normal rhythm. And if you want to find out a little bit more about what are the seven areas that I work with when I work with a client, I'll put the video up here, which was last week's uh, video on the seven different areas that might be impacting your sleep. So go ahead, have a look at that, and you might actually find some really good golden nuggets for you to not worry about your sleep issues and, and allow it to return it to normal. When we look at long-term insomnia, the case is very different. And this is something that I struggled with as well in the past, um, just like I mentioned earlier in this video. Long-term insomnia is something that would have persisted for at least three nights a week for a period of about three months. So it doesn't really go away by itself. It doesn't, your sleep doesn't return to normal. And why is three times a week? Because actually most of us do have some struggles with our sleep. So this is why we can actually differentiate between something like a shorter term or perhaps a temporary uh, sleep problem for one and two nights and something that becomes a longer term problem. So when we look at longer term insomnia, some of the things that actually is um, keeping the sleep disturbances going is that we start to worry about it. We start to be concerned about what happens the next day. We start predicting that, you know, if I don't sleep really well at night, then tomorrow I won't be able to be as productive. And this becomes almost like a vicious cycle. And so how you treat insomnia if it's shorter term, it's very different how you treat insomnia when it becomes a longer term problem. And currently you might not be able to do anything else about it or might not know what to do about it. And this is where when I talk about sleep and talk about non-sleep disorder related sleep issues, I talk about the fact that uh, we can all develop skills around sleeping and the four pillars of sleep. So when I start working with a client, we normally look at what are the different dynamics that play a role in their longer term insomnia. And these are people who might have struggled for at least sort of a couple of years, three to four years. Some of my previous clients have struggled with uh, their longer term insomnia for well over 10 years. So this is something that has been actually really impacting their life for a longer period of time. But it does not mean that you're not able to overcome it. The fact is that unless you have some underlying medical issues or perhaps a medication or a, a medical disorder that is causing your insomnia, you can overcome it. What I suggest you do is you start looking at keeping a sleep diary. 
and really understanding what are the number of hours that you first of all spending in bed and secondly what are the number of hours you're actually sleeping and this is not to stress over it and know exactly how many minutes it's having a brief idea about what that is and then you can start looking at how you can make sure that those hours in bed sleeping are really quality. And this is a mistake sometimes people get into, and I see it all the time when, work with, when I work with clients. People think that by spending more time in bed, the chances of their sleep being better is gonna increase. But a lot of the times, actually, it's the opposite. The more time you spend in bed, the more time, the more different things you start doing in bed, the less likely that you're actually going to be sleeping. Your bed needs to really mean sleep, or if you're in a relationship, intimacy, but nothing else, nothing else that is what I call an entertainment element. Because once you start doing other things in bed, that means that your brain knows that actually I can do anything in bed rather than just sleeping. So it changes the meaning of the bed. So once you've kept your sleep diary and once you've really taken everything else out of the bedroom environment or the bed environment particularly, you can start looking at what are the other tools and techniques that will help you to get into sleep. And some of the previous videos again address those things, things like switching off and getting back into bed when you're woken up in the middle of the night. So now that we have gone through the difference between short-term and long-term insomnia, I want you to take a moment and think about your current situation. What do you think is happening with you and with your sleep at the moment? Is it, has it been going on for longer than two weeks and you're, you're really not able to get over the sleep problems? Or has this been really a consistently longer period of time, at least the three months? And use the comment box below and I would love to know because... Again, I'm here to help and support you. If you, if you need to answer and ask any questions, I'm here to support you to treat and overcome your insomnia in 2019. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned that I will share a free resource with you. We have put together an ebook called 28 Ways to Overcome Your Insomnia Naturally. And I will put the link below for you so that you can go ahead and download that. Did you like this video? Click on the like button below, subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends and family. So many people globally struggle with insomnia and other sleep related problems. So this might be the first video that they would have seen that includes some practical explanations about differences, about different types of insomnia. So go ahead and share it with them and hopefully we can collectively help each other to develop skills around sleep so that we can all guarantee a good night's sleep every single night.